Welcome in, everybody. I am Dan Weeder of the Chicago Tribune, joined by Dion Miller of ABC7 Chicago. Feels like the carousel is going around and around and around, and you wind up right back at the same place. Mitch Trubisky, your starting quarterback for Sunday night against the Green Bay Packers. Matt Nagy delayed this announcement on Wednesday. He delayed it on Thursday. He finally felt ready, Dion, on Friday afternoon to say Mitch is our starting quarterback in Green Bay. Neither one of us was surprised by the official declaration, but here we are, right back where we here, started. Here we are, like warming up leftovers the day after Thanksgiving. It's a meal I feel like we've had before, right? Um, I, I It was inevitable. I don't know why they waited on this news all week. That to me seems silly. That's not gamesmanship. You're playing the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. Like, just say who it is. Like, yeah, I don't know that it's... I sadly, I'm not sure either quarterback is going to make that big of a difference. Not that Green Bay's defense is that great. I'm just saying the way this offense has looked through the first 10 games and where they sit right now, I, I, you or I could be behind center. I'm not sure it's going to make this big, big change for them. And yet here they are. And I feel like Nagy's had to swallow some humble pie here. I mean, he made that decision to bench Trubisky with such conviction. And, and he was like, nope, we're not turning back. And well, now we kind of it might be necessity but they say Foles isn't as bad as we thought yet somehow he's still not able to practice and he's still not able to get on the field yeah and, and let's make this very clear obviously that the Bears said that this decision was going to be multi-layered as they went into their bye week and as they came out of their bye week it was one going to be about who was available well Mitch Trubisky is available this week yeah. Nick Foles has not been so that's a big part of this but there's also performance-based you know, justification for this with the way Nick Foles struggled through his seven starts. And there's schematic wrinkles to this. I think the Bears saw in their self-scouting that they can do some things with their entire offense, with Mitch Trubisky as their quarterback under center that can help enliven the running game to some extent, hopefully Anything. enliven some of the other playmakers they have. And so it's not just about Nick Foles' hit pointer. While that is a big part of this decision this week, if Mitch Trubisky plays well on Sunday, even in a loss, it's my understanding that this will be his job going forward. And so here we are, we're, we're going back down this road. And to your point, Matt made that decision in week three with his gut. And he said that yeah. multiple times. It was his gut feeling. It wasn't just based on the one interception after halftime against the Falcons. We've documented for two and a half right. years, all the struggles Mitch has had, but now it's all sort of coming back to the same place. And, and it's hard to sort of sit there. I know you've sat through these Zoom calls this week listening to things about Mitch Trubisky, these glowing endorsements yeah. that feel so hollow because what? You know, what, what? what are right, right, talking about this? Right. So, so you believe, Matt Nagy, that he has become a better NFL quarterback not playing. Okay, that, it, when he played for two and a half years and we saw the same things over and over again. That's why I don't, I, I can't buy the redemption story. I would love for him to play well. I would love for them, them, this to go well. I, I, I just cannot. It's not, we know who Mitch is. That's the reason they benched him. It wasn't because of that game. It was because of the body of work. And, and I, did he learn things? Yeah. Can he grow from this? Yeah. But again, I go back to just feels like leftovers. It's like, yeah. All right, I, I'm not really excited about this. I was the first time, but round two, I'm not. I, I am dreading Monday's conversation in this city because if Mitch plays well, the reaction is going to be an overreaction and it's going to be extreme and it's going to be, okay, yeah. maybe he finally figured it out. And if he plays terribly, we're going to be right back in the same position with the Bears season going down the drain and still no quarterback answers. And no matter what happens Sunday night, this conversation just is going to feel stale and it's going to yeah. feel like we've done this before in some way, shape or form. And so there is nothing to it that that feels new or exciting about it. Look, they've got a big game Sunday night against the Packers. And so, I, like I've said a hundred times, I'll be open-minded. I'll go into that game allowing Mitch Trubisky to show me his growth and, and, and what he can put his growth toward on the field, in-game action, right? But I'm not just going to have amnesia and forget about everything else I've watched right. for three and a half years of his career and say, you know, if there's two good drives or they score a touchdown in the first half, we, you know, like... <laughs> Okay, it's, it's fixed and we're back. You the know? bar is so low, Dan. The bar is so right. low. Like that, that would that would be exciting <laughs> if they scored a touchdown in the first half in Green Bay. Like that would be a big deal. I just I feel like this game is you know setting us up for okay, it'll be great until kickoff, and then we'll see the same old stuff, and then Aaron Rodgers will come out, and it will become even more glaringly obvious just how far the Bears are from competing consistently in this division, let alone in the NFC. Like it's. It's just going to, I feel like it's just going to echo throughout these next six games that 
we this was a mistake and we're going to be paying for it still for years to come and then then you go into like how hot is that seat for both pace and Nagy to uh, heading into the end of this season where again things have not gone well no they haven't no they have not i on thanksgiving afternoon as we're sitting there on the zoom call with matt Nagy, and he's talking about things that have impressed him throughout the week of practice with mitch trubisky and he's talking about huddle mechanics and he's talking about getting <laughs> exactly like i pushed back in my chair and i was just like oh my god i can't believe we're doing this again we're talking about getting in and out of the huddle efficiently and and you know these are not conversations that the people in houston are having they're not conversations that the people in right. kansas city are having by the way i'm not sure if right around that same time that matt was talking about the huddle mechanics at practice for mitch trubisky patrick mahomes was sending out a tweet that said that man, Deshaun Watson, is special as Deshaun Watson had just laid a 45 to whatever it was, 25 beat down of the yeah. Detroit Lions. And you're like, wow, is that tweet as painful as it gets for Bears fans on Thanksgiving yeah. Day watching an MVP and a Super Bowl winner praise the other quarterback that they also I, could have had? I feel like I feel like Bears fans have been had been relegated to grabbing at scraps of like uh, of it just because of the poor decisions that were made at the top that have left them in this position of the offense is never actually going to be good. I mean, isn't that what you hear from fans all the time where they're like, I thought sometime in my lifetime that, that they would get it together. And yet that's not happening again. And it, it just, I mean, again, I, I can't get behind a good week of practice and tempo. I can't get excited about that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm glad that Eddie Jackson is off the COVID-19 reserve list for that defense. I am glad for that. I'm a little nervous about Akeem Hicks not being 100%. I don't know if that's gamesmanship or if, you know, where he's really at there with two weeks off. I'm praying that that's something for their defense's sake that he can be there up front to kind of try and disrupt Aaron Rodgers, who has just looked MVP like again. Yeah, I mean, there's no question. And, and Rodgers isn't going to beat himself. I will say that over the last couple of years, the Bears defense has shown the ability to at least slow down Aaron Rodgers and keep them in a game. So I'm not worried that this is going to be one of those nights where, you know, 2014 Rodgers threw six touchdown passes in the first half, first half and it was right. 40 to nothing at halftime and, and everything was falling apart everywhere. It's not going to be that bad, but the offense what gives you fun. that confidence, Dan. Just that, just the fact that they've been able to slow him down in the past. I have, yeah. I have no open mind. I have zero confidence. I, have, not, I am so Deion Downer right now. I'm not promising you that the Bears aren't going to lose in, in demoralizing fashion. I just don't think the <laughs> score is going to get to some sort of lopsided number that makes the rest of the world go, yeesh. The offense could make the rest of the world go, yeesh. you got to consider this as well. Mitch Trubisky is returning to play behind an offensive line that looks nothing like it did the last time he threw a pass in September. He's returning to unite with Bill Lazor as his play caller, whom he's never had a game with before. And so they're going to have to have this blind leap of faith throughout the week of practice, putting together the plays they like and what they want to do in this game, and then try to turn those loose on game night. Mitch has not had great success against the Packers over the last few years as well. And Mike Pettin plays that 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 sort of defense where he, he he uses a lot of defensive backs and he plays coverage and he forces you to beat him with the run. The Bears never commit to the run. And Mitch Trubisky has struggled to get this offense moving. In hit the four games that he's played against Mike Pettin, Dion, the Bears offense has scored five touchdowns in 45 possessions. That is why you're feeling Dion Downer yeah. feelings and, and, and not having that confidence because this Packers defense does things that take away some of the things that Mitch Trubisky does well. God, would he have loved to come back against the Detroit Lions who are falling apart in every way, shape, and form, and he probably could have lit up for 335 yards and three touchdowns, and everyone would have felt good about it. This isn't that game, and so the Bears are going to have to find answers within it, and, and we'll see if they're able to do that. My big question for Mitch has been his mental uh, state at this point, because this is a guy who they've said has gotten in his own head, who who has to like be talked through so many things. Like, how does he go from admitting he was blindsided by being benched to now I'm back and I'm I'm just I, I'm a better quarterback and I'm going to embrace the opportunity like again blah 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 like I don't I don't I, where is he at with that like to know that they had no faith in him and now yeah. by necessity they have to go back to him this is not like Matt Nagy saying we have such confidence in Mitch to turn this around no this is just saying I'm sorry we're down to you again I mean. <laughs> Well, it's a good question, but I will say this, that, that that he has had the luxury of time. And it was interesting when Mitch came on the Zoom call on Friday afternoon, it was sort of jarring because this isn't a normal season for you or I. We're not 
at Hallis Hall on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. We're not in the locker room three or four times a week where we're having these interactions and we're seeing guys. We had not seen Mitch Trubisky up close since he had that backpack over his shoulders and was walking out of Atlanta with a demotion, right? And, and it was mm -hmm. glum Mitch Trubisky at the end of September. And, and when he came on the Zoom screen on Friday afternoon, it was like, whoa, it has been a long time since we talked to you, right? Two yeah. months since we last talked to Mitch Trubisky. And so things can happen over time where you can you can put the, I mean, I, I give him credit for acknowledging the internal frustration, mm -hmm. disappointment. To your point, he said he was felt blindsided and caught off guard by the benching. And I, I think eventually you get to a point of, okay, I've got to look at my long-term future and what do I need to do to get better individually and stop worrying about all uh, who believes in me and who doesn't. I just got to invest in the grind. And Mitch has always been terrific at that, investing in the grind and trying to make progress. It just never translates into on-field production. And so that's where, you know, as much as we can praise him for all the off-the-field extracurricular positives that he brings to the locker room and to the team, it doesn't mean anything if you go out and lay a stinker in Green Bay on Sunday night. No, it doesn't. And I we've talked about before, Virginia's been pissed in the past. She will be furious if they are embarrassed on a national stage for a second straight game, she won't tolerate it. And honestly, I just feel like Mitch needs to play well enough to be chosen as a backup in Cleveland because that's where I ultimately <laughs> think he's going to end up anyway. So just prove you can do that over the next six weeks. And then thanks for your time. I mean, I guess this is interesting because of this. We've got a, a slight new twist in the plot, even though it's a, a new twist, but it's actually an old twist. And I, I don't really know where to go with this. Like I said, I'm, I'm really, really dreading Monday because I just, I, I cannot take the superficial surface level conversation that is almost certainly going to be there on Monday, depending on what happens in this game on Sunday night. And I just, I want to get through this game, maybe a couple more, and then let's, let's see where this thing is. Obviously the bears cannot afford to fall three games behind the Packers. They cannot yeah. afford to fall below 500. They cannot afford to fall deeper down those NFC standings when you're trying to chase a wild card berth. And so this is a huge one Sunday night, and and it, it's huge for all the right reasons and then for some of these other reasons that we're talking about as well. I mean, we're going to watch, but I feel like we're going to watch like this. Like, I cover my eyes, you know, with with the nail polish I've peeled off because I've been so frustrated with this team. Seriously, <laughs> I can't do it anymore, Dan. I'm not going to let them ruin my holidays. I'm not. I'm not. We're just going to get through this weekend, and we'll see what happens. I will certainly be watching Sunday night, Dion. It is part of my uh, employment obligations. Same. And so I will be watching, and then we'll figure out where we go from here. Uh, yeah, again, I don't know. I don't know whether, I, whether I'm excited for this, this, this new wrinkle or whether I'm just dreading another five weeks of all the same things and then figuring out that it leads us right to that big square dead end sign that we've been waiting to see since really the start of October, right? I'm riding this analogy to the end. It is like leftovers, right? Eventually, you just get sick of seeing it in the fridge, and you just say goodbye, right? This is what's going to happen. Sounds to me like you're hungry and that you need to get your day after <laughs> plate of food. <laughs> to the end, Weeder, I am always hungry. <laughs> I, I did pile on the leftovers at lunch today. Uh, always terrific. Those leftovers are good. I, I, I will never shoot down the Thanksgiving leftovers the way you're shooting down this leftover story from the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Sorry, I've had my fill. Happy belated Thanksgiving. <laughs>